that can happen on the first few kilometers of a climb. You suffer, you go out of the back, and then you get your breath again and get another rhythm and manage to reintegrate back into this group. But Rominger looked in very serious pain then. I think a lot of that has to do with his knee. So Indurain in second place. Reese has dropped back to the side of Luc Leblanc, I think it is. And these riders setting the pace, and it's still Ulrich, and it's almost as if Barney Reese, Bjorn Reese wants to go behind and check out who's in the brew. That's a difficult thing to do, and not a very sensible one, because as far as I'm concerned, the most dangerous man to him in this group is Miguel Indurain. He should stay on Indurain's wheel, because he still has a chance to react to the other riders if they attack. Well, there is Evgeny Berzin. He's riding in 13th position in the line. The boy in the pink jersey from Onse, by the way, is not Alex Zul anymore. It is the Australian rider, Patrick Yonker, who is going better and better. Zula has sailed straight from the front and through and off the back. Well, if Miguel Indurain was leading the Tour de France at the moment, he would not let himself drop back that far on one of the climbs. He would want to sit in second position behind a teammate, especially one as strong as Jan Ulrich, so that he could control the rhythm. He could talk to his teammate and say, lift it a little bit, lower it down a little bit because I'm suffering. And that, I think, is a strange move by Rees. Maybe he started the climb and realized he's not feeling as good as he's been telling everybody. This is now a superb group, and I don't think... Let's have a look at the overall. The first rider in the race is here, Reese Alon, the second is here, but he's gone straight back again. He dropped back, and now he's accelerated, and he's accelerating right from the bottom of the climb, really. We're only four kilometers into it. They've got to react and get him straight away, because if he does go at this point, he would get two minutes. We were certainly... But, would, but that wasn't a very good attack, you know. He came from fourth or fifth position, and he just lifted the pace a little bit. I think that may well have been a psychological attack to just try and show his rivals that he's in good shape and he may well not be he may be going through a bad patch at the moment and that was just to throw the gauntlet down a little bit but it wasn't a super attack by Reese. but he keeps looking at the riders he looks at Miguel Indurain he really I think feels very confident here now it's another attack and a fast acceleration too. Miguel Indurain gets his wheel, followed by Laurent Dufault, and these the three riders. Uh, Viren comes straight up. Leblanc is up there. So too is Pipoli. And in fact, the whole group reacting very well. Berzin looks a little bit suspect. He's on the tail end of the whip. This is a very dangerous thing for Reese to do because what he will do is open himself up to a counter-attack if ever he puts himself into difficulty. But what I think he's trying to do is actually get rid of Berzin. And Berzin, as we speak, has gone out of the back at the moment, 40 or 50 metres back. Berzin is the furthest back of the line. Bjorn Rees is throwing it down to them. He's saying, if you want to win the Tour, you have got to take it from me. There is little Evgeny Berzin, just trying to keep that lead group in the picture. But if he gets one more acceleration like that from Bjorn Rees, uh, then he'll come, he will be left. But I think, again, Rees has slowed right down. It's a very strange thing to do. He does open himself up to a counter-attack. Dufault moving up on the outside there. And another rider he's already got rid of, on, I think, is Abraham Alana, because I think that last acceleration got rid of him. Rees goes up again. He's, he's the next to, one. He's, he's the to, next one. He has gone again. This is the third time that Reese has gone. We think he's shaken out the second and third rider overall in this race with his two previous attacks. And now he's going for a third time. It's almost if he goes back and takes a look at who he's hurt. Definitely, that was an incredible attack. And he realizes this is the kind of thing that will put Miguel Indurain under pressure. He can't respond to attacks. He can't lift his pace. He can only ride at one rhythm. And now Indurain has to get into a rhythm and try and come back to the yellow jersey of Bjarne Reese. Well, Bjarne Rees has been confident. He told his team back in November he'd win the Tour de France. But my goodness me, he's ridden so well at this time. And now he's looking around as if to see where he's going to next. And he's just keeping the pace nice and steady. There are now only three riders with him. Second in line is Luc Leblanc, followed by Laurent Dufault. And in fourth place, the man leading the King of the Mountains competition at the moment, Richard Virenc. But Virenc really seems to be suffering. And Bjarne Rees really has opened up a gap. Well, Ulrich, not surprisingly, is gone. It was his job to soften them all up at the start of the climb, and they've all gone. Now Reese has waited, he's attacked them, he's waited, he's attacked them, and now he's gone. Well, he didn't attack them, he actually just rode them off his wheel. He pressed on the pedals a little bit and didn't even realise that he was going away alone. Well, he is riding like a superb champion. He is proving he is really the very best man in this race. Bjorn Rees gave them plenty of warning. He told them two days ago he'd win by two minutes at Otakamp. 
They've all had their chance. They were right there with him. He tempted them. He, he left them. He went back to them. He tempted them. He did it three times. And now it looks as though he's going to ride to the victory at the top of Otakam. Well, an incredible performance there. It was amazing the way he just rode away from everybody else. Further down the slopes, Miguel Indurain is suffering. He's, he's surrounded by Luttenberger, the climber, Laurent Dufault, and the face there you can just see in the middle of Jan Ulrich. I think a man for the future. And for the moment, I've lost the word about to the world champion Alano, but I think he's behind the Indurain group now. So Indurain is going to improve himself overall. If he continues like this, he won't gain time on Varenk, who is down below there at the moment. But Ulrich is back with Indurain, as in Luttenberger. Rominger, remember, dropped very early on. They're way down the climb now. There's the world champion, Alano. In fact, he's in this group behind Indurain. The boy in green is Federico Fernando Escartin, the Kelme rider. And now we're back with the leader of the Tour de France and the leader on the climb to Otakam. There, that shot gives you some idea how high we have come in the last 15 minutes or so of climbing. But Bjorn Arise is like a man possessed this year. Third overall one year ago. He's won the King of the Mountains in the past. He's a very good time trial rider. And he could well now be laying the foundation, as indeed Indurain did two years ago, to his victory in Paris in this year's Tour. He really took the bull by the horns. All the climbers, I think, were expecting to launch their attacks on this slope. They really felt that this was their domain. Men like Luc Leblanc, Laurent Dufaux, who we're looking at here, and Richard Virenque, but they just could not respond to the power of Bjarne Ries, who just rode away from them. This is the Indurain group. In fact, at the back of the Indurain group, Miguel Indurain is no longer there. He's cracked and gone out of the back of the group. Miguel Indurain is not the King of July anymore. He really has suffered in this year's Tour de France. And you know, he hasn't even got enough to stay with this group, which contains Abraham Alano and Jan Ulrich. He gave it his best shot today, Indurain. He was right there in the finest position to do whatever he wanted to do, and he couldn't do it. Uh, five kilometers to go. We now have the man who is leading the race here at Otakamp. And Bjorn Aris now looks as though he's going to give all of Denmark a great moment in sport because surely now, even though we have an horrendously cruel long ride to the Pyrenees tomorrow, he is now building to become the winner of the Tour in Paris on Sunday. Amazing to see this man go uphill. He's never a rider that you'd thought of as a great climber, but he just seems to go stronger and stronger. A long way down the climb, though, Tony Rominger has recovered a little bit, and in fact, he's ridden up to Miguel Indurain. And I wonder what Rominger thinks when he sees Indurain here, the man he thought he was going to take on and beat in the Tour de France, and both of them now are in trouble. And Rominger purposefully goes by him by accelerating and not even offering him a wheel to help him up the mountain. He doesn't want him sat in behind him. He now wants to gain time over Indurain. So Tony Rominger goes past Miguel Indurain, who could well, you know, fall away from eighth overall because Laurent Dufault, Fernando Escartin are both behind Indurain overall and ahead of him on the climb today. Well, that's an amazing thing to see. Miguel Indurain obviously thought coming into the Pyrenees would be a place where he would be on home territory. He felt that this was a climb he knew very well, and this is where he could stamp his authority and recuperate some time on this man in the yellow jersey, Bjarne Arise. He hasn't been able to do it, and obviously this is not the year of Miguel Indurain. And the year the organization chose to take the Tour de France through Indurain's home village, he would surely, everybody would have thought automatically he would lead the tour through there. And it's not going to be now because that's tomorrow. And Indurain could well be starting the stage tomorrow more than 10 minutes overall behind the leader of the Tour de France. There he is. Miguel Indurain, the king for the past five years. He's in the famous Five Club along with everybody else. He's the only man to ever have won five tours in a row. But to be just that one more and be the only member of the Six Club, that's not going to be. Bjorn Arise continues to set his pace. 28 seconds is gap by the standards he has set. That won't be enough for him, I don't think. He'll continue as best he can. This is the little group which is settling in behind him. Varenk is 71, 74 is Dufault, 111 here is uh, Luc Leblanc and the rider on the right, 166 is Leonardo Pippoli Bjorn Arise though can see the finish if he looks to his right, it zigzags right the way over that little hill there 
Harris now using all the power that he's got. He's got to keep a tempo going now because he's the man that's decided he's going to open the race up. He's gone out alone a long way from the summit of this climb. He attacked with about seven kilometers remaining, and he's got to ride this the same way as he rode the time trial to Val d'Isère and the same way as he rode the mountain finish to Sestriere as well. He's got to ride alone, use his own tempo, and keep his speed up without losing anything at all. Rominger has made a great recovery here because he's actually coming back up to the group that con contains his teammate Abraham Alano, Escartin, and I think one or two others. Well, the pace was too hot for Rominger at the bottom, and they shed him, but they've all slowed down that little tad, and now Rominger has kept up his tempo, and he has done a great ride, inspired, no doubt, by the fact that he is seeing Indrain lose quite a lot of time today, not just to the leader on the road, Reese, but also to Rominger as well. So, almost a minute, and uh, the steep part of the climb will continue steady on. Watch out for those cars, Bjarne. As he now heads up towards the finish, you'll very shortly see the kite in the sky. This is the chase group. The support there from the Festina car for his two men, Laurent Dufour and Richard Varenk. And they're telling him the situation behind that Indurain has cracked. You can build time, you can improve on your seventh place overall, Varenk. And that is what the manager is saying because there is also gone from here is Ulrich in fifth, Rominger and Evgeny Berzin and Abraham Olano. So Richard Varenk could be climbing to a podium place here. He very well could be the group here. We're looking at of Tony Rominger, Abraham Olano. They're more than one minute and 40 seconds behind the leading man there, Bjarne Ries, on the climb. But what a ride, Bjarne. The man in the pink there has done Jan Ulrich. He worked as a slave to Bjarne Ries on the early slopes of this climb, and he's still recovered to stay with this group of big, serious challenges. Uh, Lorna Broshard and Pyotr Ugramov were the other two riders in that chase group. Strong men all. Ugramov we've hardly seen, yet he holds on to 11th place overall. And so the top uh, 12, well, the, the absence of, the, of Bo Hamburger, but 13 of the top 12 riders we've all seen in the action here in the showdown on Otakam. There'll be a reshaping, though, of the top 12 positions. Look at this crowd now as he goes under the one kilometre to go banner on Otakam. This is nothing compared to the day we have tomorrow because we go right across the Pyrenees on the longest stage of the race. And let's hope he hasn't used up too much energy today. I think he'll be riding on elation tomorrow because the man is flying up the last kilometre at the moment. It's strange to see he's on the bottom part of his handlebars there, using all the power of his upper body as well as that of his legs to keep his machine going at the moment. A little bit of a problem with the gear there. He looks down to make sure he's in the right one, but Bjarne Arise is really riding into history this afternoon. Well, the latest time checks, uh, Berzin is now three minutes behind, and remember, he started the day third overall, a minute 08 off the yellow jersey. He's lost three minutes on this climb. Miguel Indurain has lost a two and a half minutes now, and so this is all change again. Bjorn Arise, the parting of the waves here for the chase group, which includes an Italian, a Swiss, and two Frenchmen. But they're all giving best to a Danish rider in the tour, and they've never done that before. Well, this group of climbers is quite amazing to look at. They're riding extremely fast over the final kilometre of this climb, but really, they couldn't match the power of a man not renowned as a climber, Bjarne Arise. They accelerated themselves, but when he put the hammer down, they just didn't have the, the power to stay with him. And so I think the grimace is slowly turning to a smile here as Bjarne Rees hasn't got the gap he said he would get. But, well, we'll forgive him for that because he's got half of it today. He's pedaled up to the summit of Otakam as he sits out of the saddle now, opened his mouth and searches for the finish. Inside five hours for the ride to the top of the Pyrenees and then he'll sit back and he will watch the time tick away. The rivals who are worried about him and well they should have done. He even gave away two seconds there, saluting the crowds. He crosses the line. He knows in his heart this Tour de France is for him, barring accident. Now Laurent Dufour accelerates with his teammate on the wheel. Richard Varenk, the grimace of Luc Leblanc, who will always try to beat Varenk in a sprint. As Dufour comes up to the line, the clock counts down, 300 metres to go. And Richard Varenk goes for the line. Leblanc on this occasion hasn't got it. Pipoli is tailed off as Richard looks over his shoulder and Dufour also rides well. The two Festina boys will get second and third as they head up to the line and they've closed in over that last kilometre too because it's going to be less than a minute as they come up to the line for Festina. Ferrand takes it on the line for second place, 49 seconds down. 
Dufault is third, Leblanc is fourth, and Pipoli is fifth. But the ride on the latter half of this climb surely has been done by Tony Rominger, who now sprints for sixth place on the mountain. And Jan Ulrich is going for it. Ulrich, by the way, is a third old sprinter. Where he's finding the strength from now, I don't know. As they come into our view, I think Ulrich is going to try and take Tony Rominger as they go to the line. But Rominger, like everybody else, has lost big time today. As Ulrich looks over to see where Poitou Ugrimov is, not too worried. Rominger, Ugrimov, uh, Rominger, Ulrich, Ugrimov over the line. Escartine coming in. He comes over the line too, and he's ahead of Abraham Olano, who was second overall. Here's the face of the man who has been the king of the Tour de France since 1991. On his 32nd birthday today, he looks around, he's alone, he's a lonely man. Miguel Ingeray knows now there'll be no yellow jersey when he goes to Pamplona tomorrow. There might never be another yellow jersey for him in any Tour de France. Because today, he can't blame the weather. It's warm and sunny. Last time, it was cold. Today, he simply wasn't good enough. Miguel Ingerain, he was uh, 4 minutes and 38 seconds down at the start. He's now 7 minutes and 16 seconds down by my calculations at the finish. Well, he lived up to his promise. Bjorn Reese wins at Otakam, finishing 49 seconds ahead of Richard Varenk and Laurent Dufault. Tony Rominger raced back into the picture. He finished sixth. Abraham Olano, the world champion, was 11th, but one minute, 46 seconds behind. Miguel Indurain, he lost another two minutes and 28 seconds today. The Russian Evgeny Berzin, he was even worse. He lost two minutes, 59. And a tough ascent, too, for Alex Zula. He lost the best part of eight minutes. And Chris Boardman, well, he climbed better than most, and he finished just over nine minutes behind. He won in the Alps to take the lead. Now Bjorn Arise wins in the Pyrenees to increase it. What a performance he gave today. Overall, Rees has prized open the race now. He's ahead of Abraham Olano by two minutes and 42 seconds. Tony Rominger is up to third at two minutes and 54. Down goes the Russian rider, Evgeny Berzin, to sixth. And Miguel Indurain drops two more places to tenth. He's now over seven minutes back. And a day of consolidation for Chris Boardman. But this day belonged to just one man. Bjarne, you told your colleagues from the Danish television a few days ago that you felt you were going to win here in Hotokam. How did you know? No, I don't think I told, I told them that I wanted to win. <laughs> Maybe I told myself I wanted to win. It's always difficult for you because you never know if there was a group who can go away. But I wanted badly to win today, and I really did. And that is, that is very nice for me. Just about seven kilometers to go on the climb today. You dropped to the back of the group. Was that just to check out how everybody was? Then you, then you just went? Yeah. Well, I wanted to see how they looked in the faces, and most of them didn't look so well, so I ch tried a few times just to, not 100% to, to, I attacked, but not 100%. And then I saw they were in difficulties, so I tried to win away and it worked. You surprised that Indra and cracked? Well, yes and no. I think on the, on the mountains it didn't look so good uh, until now, and I saw him today in the beginning, he looked a little bit heavy, not so so good as the other years. So I'm sorry for him, I would like to have, have, have him on the podium with me, but well, it's the race and I'm sorry for him. I would like if he could win tomorrow.